So we're recording now. So we're just waiting for people to get here. And uh, if you signed up for the class and you are not here, I hope you're watching this recording right now. <laughs> so I have a busy day today and uh, we won't wait too long. Uh, Tracy, what, what are your thoughts? Should we, you want to take a second and make some phone calls or what are your thoughts? Yeah. Yep. So I'll turn my video off I'll, and mute while I make a few phone calls. I think when I was calling yesterday, they're like, is it eight or eight 30? So I think there was a little um, confusion there, but I did confirm eight o'clock for everybody. So um, let me just make a call. Maybe they're just having trouble logging in. All right. So we'll just wait a few minutes here. Uh, I'm going to share the presentation. So everybody who gets in knows that we are in the right class. Eric, I assume you're seeing the marketing and social media screen. Okay. So Jacqueline, how are you? I'm good. Have you set up, Eric, have you reached out to Jacqueline? Have you guys set up a meeting yet? Jacqueline, are you interested? I was supposed to meet him last week, but then I ended up going to work. So I got to reschedule that probably for the next week. Okay. What we're doing is having Eric meet with people first to make sure that, you know, they have something to work on and they have some guidance in terms of the writing components of whatever project they are um, embarking on, whether it's the portfolio or a website or whatever. And then I'll follow up the next week after that and just go through some individual brainstorming and coaching and ideas. So there's no rush. We have this contract through the end of June. So you and Eric can reschedule that and we understand that things happen. Jacqueline, okay. remind me of your business again. It's called T-Shirt Plus Production. And what I do is I do like the uniforms, uh, yep. workwear, anything that's a pair related to uh, businesses. How long have you been doing that? Uh, since last year. I started out on Etsy and Shopify, <clears throat> and now I want to get more into the serious business of doing contracting or bids and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you are an expert on using social media to market your business. Yes, I, I haven't used it a lot, but I know all about it. I've seen a lot of people using it. So yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Eric and you will have fun talking about the t-shirt business, that's for sure. We have a brother who does the same thing. Um, he and his son uh, do t-shirt printing and mass production in Wisconsin. So okay. I'm sure he will share some insight and help you through that when you guys do get together. Oh, good. Thanks. Jacqueline, do you do uh, other promotional items or just t-shirts? Uh, T-shirts, anything workwear related also can be koozie. Ask her again. It can be uh oh uh koozie. Okay, so you so when you said that it reverberated through me. So okay, okay. we're gonna test Eric and I talking at the same time. So ask a question. So can people hear me if I talk from here? Because I'm muted because we're otherwise we'll echo. <laughs> No, you are muted. Oh, I get it. All right. Well, Eric and I will just have to coordinate when we talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no, not just t-shirts, anything workwear related. And then like, you know, other items, um, bags, mugs, t-shirts, tumblers, anything that you can um, print on basically. So you do promotional, all kinds of promotional stuff. Yes. Good. Excellent. All right. Well, I look forward to working with you and to helping you ramp up your business. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. It's 808. I think we'll wait two more minutes to give people a little bit more time and then we'll get started. So as we're getting started here, whether you're listening live or you're listening to a recording, you should have the workbook that was emailed to you last night. 
And then go ahead and open up the four activity Word documents that I also emailed you. Um, you can print them if you like doing things, you know, pen on paper, or you can have them electronic, which I think is better because it helps you keep track of stuff. But um, go ahead and do that. And like I said, we're going to get started here in about two minutes. I see Adam's on and Matt's on. Hey, Fasia's on. Hi, Fasia. How are you? Fasia. Hi, how are you? Sorry, how's it going? It's good. We were hoping you would you would come in person again. We enjoyed meeting you last time. Thank you. Thank you. I did try, but I had to drop off the kids to school. So I'm joining via Zoom. That's okay. We just want to make sure that people have the opportunity to come in if they want and if not. Um, so it's good to see you. So far, we only have two people on the line that are taking the class. So we're just tap dancing a little bit for one more minute until we get some more people on. So just uh, be patient and we'll get started here shortly. Yeah, see, and just to check in real quick here, I did make some phone calls and I'm not able to reach them via phone. So, um, and the emails went out this morning, correct? So i um, hoping they will be joining us shortly. I would say um, we could at least start with introductions or Adam and I have some announcements and uh, things that we would like to share. We could start with that if you want to oh, start. Fantastic. Yes, please. So um, yeah, emails. I sent several reminders. People should have gotten all the course materials. Um, I sent them to the five or six students we had registered. So I think we're good to get started. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, I'm Ann Johnson. I'm the primary instructor for today's course. Uh, with me in the same room is Eric Johnson. Eric, why don't you turn off your camera? Eric and I are colleagues and siblings here at PE Services, and we came kind of crossing our fingers that we'd have some uh, others show up. And we're frankly, we're happy if anybody walks in the door. So we're ready to welcome you. Uh, Tracy, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and make your announcements? Absolutely. So good morning, everyone. Um, I am particularly excited about marketing and the social media, um, but I'm Tracy Jackson. I'm with the Office of Civil Rights. I'm the business advisor, and we are here for small businesses as support and advocates and help you building capacity by providing you training such as this today. Um, I, um, I, I know I've been working with the two of you that are on today. Um, we do have um, several opportunities for training. I will put that link in there again. In addition, um, for actively pursuing MnDOT projects, we have micro grants up to $3,500. So I will also add that in there. Oh, look, Matt is uh, assisting me today. Thank you. Um, so he just put in the events link um, and that's by calendar gives you an opportunity to look at all the trainings that are offered and to go ahead and get signed up for those. Um, so go ahead and do that. We also have one on one technical assistance with um, Anne and Eric from uh, PE services, as well as IMO consulting as separate. So depending on what your needs are, we can help you find. <clears throat> so if you want to talk further about your capability statement or your social media, um, they, you can do a follow-up one-on-one with them. Um, I'm going to pass it over. To, thank you, uh, Matt, for putting those in. I'll jump to you. And then, um, Adam, we are also recruiting for another program, if you could mention that. So I'll pass it over to Matt. Hi, good morning. Um, yeah, I work with Tracy. I work with Adam. I don't have anything fancy to say. Uh, but I put the links in there and we're here to help you and here to listen and here to learn and uh, reach out to us. Our phone numbers are there, our emails are there. Links are in the chat. So um, yeah, reach out if you need help with anything, if you need um, assistance finding different training programs we have available. Adam, you're up. Thanks, Matt. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Adam Marks. I'm a project specialist in the business and program development unit of the Office of Civil Rights. Uh, as Tracy mentioned, uh, we have another program coming up and I work more on the workforce development side of things and we have a six week uh, carpenters training taking place in the metro area. Um, that training has been postponed two weeks due to um, low enrollment at the moment so there's great opportunities uh, for up to 10 individuals in the metro area to uh, 
learn from the Carpenters Training Institute and gain basic skills to enter the, the highway heavy construction workforce. Um, the training will begin on March 27th. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact myself, uh, Scott Panic, or Katie Jekylls with the Carpenters Training Institute, and I will put their contact information as well as my own in the chat. Hey, Adam, what are the outcomes typically of that training program? So you'll gain some uh, standard certifications such as OSHA 30. You'll get um, uh, your flagger card. You'll also receive basic instruction and uh, uh, hand tools. Uh, you'll include some coursework in uh, surveying. Uh, you'll get exposure to welding, um, basic carpentry and pile driving techniques. Um, so uh, that's quite a diverse uh, set of skills you'll gain from it. Then at the end of the training, you'll also get a chance to meet with uh, highway heavy construction employers. I will say that uh, last year, um, our program resulted in 100% placement rate of uh, participants being placed with employers at graduation. So uh, it's a great program. And if you know anybody that may be interested, uh, please feel free to send them our way. So yes, this may not be a training for you, but please um, share with your networks if you know um, some men and women who would be interested in the construction trades and sp uh, carpentry specifically. I got a question. Yes. Um, how old do you have to be? Um, Experience-wise, what do you need? And um, is it a Monday through Friday, eight to five or? Yep, uh, I'll get the specific hours for you. I need to check with Scott on what the, the hours are, but um, you need, do need to be 18 years of age. Um, that's just a, a requirement of, you know, working on the highway heavy construction project. Um, there were, there's no experience needed. Uh, many people come with, with zero construction experience. I, I mean, they'll work with you from uh, the very basics all the way up. So uh, no experience needed there. Uh, a driver's license is required uh, and reliable transportation to get to the training or the ability to obtain one before the training starts. But other than that, um, fairly open. And the, um, the training itself is targeted towards uh, BIPOC individuals, women, to, and underrepresented communities to get them into the construction industry. So, so you said um, carpentry, but did you mentioned a few other skills that you're gaining along the way. Um, is it just yes. going to be focused in the carpentry or are you going to be well, the, able to kind of push it somewhere else? The training is uh, is held, but is uh, provided by the Carpenters Training Institute and the Carpenters Union, which actually also represents uh, pile drivers in the highway heavy construction industry. So you're able to get some uh, exposure to that field as well. Um, as a highway heavy construction carpenter, you perform a variety of work and do need to have a number of skills, which include welding and um, uh, a few other items, sur basic surveying skills, uh, things of that nature that you'll come across on, on the job. So um, while the training itself may not specialize specifically in one area, uh, as a highway heavy construction carpenter, you would be exposed to all of these things. Thank you. Sure. That's Adam, good. can you put your contact information in the, uh, th th that way you guys can do offline um, follow up if needed? Definitely. And the link. Another question, sorry. Oh, sure. Clean background, or can do you have to be, uh, can you have something on there? Uh, no background requirement. So um, I know that our, in our previous class, uh, we had individuals that were transitioning from uh, previous incarceration. Um, so it is a, a friendly opportunity for individuals uh, with no experience or with a background that are looking to uh, get in, into the industry. Thanks, Adam. Is there any other questions about that? It sounds really great. I just mentioned to my brother that I should get my daughter into that training because she wants to get into yeah. carpentry. So that's fantastic. Nice. All right, I'll promote that myself on my own social media platforms and try to get some more people in there. Uh, limited to 10 people, I heard you say, correct, Adam? Right. Okay. You know, I think at this time, even though we're going a little bit long on introductions, well, I guess we have two minutes left. Uh, oh no, I guess we're eight minutes over. Uh, Eric and I are getting ready to teach a three-part surveying class, and we do quite a bit of training for the local technical assistance program. 
you know, Tracy, it didn't even occur to me that we could be selling that. Their goal is to get people into, also into MnDOT, but really to do the kind of work that Eric and I do here at PE Services. So we will figure out a way to let you know about that. Uh, it's a three-part three part, um, training program in surveying. I also teach a CAD class, Introduction to AutoCAD, and these are very inexpensive and easy to attend. So um, uh, as a follow-up, I will uh, make sure Tracy gets information on that. Any other, um, let's see, we have Fasia on the line. Fasia, can you remind us of your business? Um, and then we'll let Jackie introduce herself again. Hi, my name is Fosia, and uh, I run a business with my brother and a friend. Um, we do public trucking um, over the road and local, and we're just looking to expand our business and get into the government contracting side of things. So we're just soaking up all the knowledge that we can. Excellent. Boy, I didn't realize you're in business with your brother. We have a lot in common. <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, I have all three of my brothers that worked for me at one time. Uh, Jacqueline, can you please unmute and just introduce yourself briefly? Hi, I'm Jacqueline Vaughn, and I'm the, my business is called T-Shirt Plus Production, and what I do is I provide uh, work uniforms and T-shirts and any type of uh, pair items. Excellent. Well, it's good to have both of you, and again, I'm hoping that several people uh, get this information through, you know, later on listening, so we'll make sure that your uh, information is included in the closed captioning as well, so people know who everybody is. All right, well, with that, I think we'll get started. Any other questions before I turn off my uh, video and we launch in? Make sure you have the workbook available. I know, uh, Fosia, you're driving, so you don't have that, so don't worry about it. But we're gonna just start out right now by just talking about marketing in general. Any questions? All right, let's go. So today's program is on marketing and social media. Um, all of the promo, as I was getting ready, all of the promo seemed to be focused on marketing around social media or with social media. But frankly, as I was preparing for the class, I was considering the fact that marketing is more than just social media. So we're going to incorporate a little bit of that as well. Uh, first off, what does the word marketing even mean? We understand um, kind of at a very high level what marketing is, but um, for those of you that might not be as familiar, marketing is basically just the activity of, of, of promoting and selling products or services. So it includes both market research and advertising, but it's really just about promoting, promotion. We can think about marketing ourselves, marketing our, <laughs> marketing our ideas. So marketing is a verb, really, that means promotion. So today we're going to talk about ways to promote or sell your products or services. And social media or social um, platforms is one of those ways. But there's other ways as well. <clears throat> How do you market already and can social media help? So what I want you to think about now is what are you doing around the whole marketing scheme? Are you using social media already? And if not, how could you be using social media? So the very first activity we have is social media activity one. So let me figure out how to get out of here. So let's take a look at social media activity one, and I've got to make sure I'm sharing this. And let's just take a minute and talk about marketing in general. Again, I know that really we have a small audience today, but if you're watching later on, you should be opening up your worksheet number one for activity one. And right now we're just going to think about what you already do and how social media might fit into that. So question one, think about your company. Some of you might have more than one company. Think about what you're selling. Is it an actual product? Is it a, serv a service? List everything you sell or need to promote. So I'm going to be quiet here, but for PE services, 
we sell a couple different products. We sell inspection, we sell, sell teaching and um, curriculum development. We sell, Eric, what are some other things we sell? Testing, we sell our expertise. That's about it, I guess. But we sell more of a service than a product. So I'm gonna be quiet for just one minute and I want you to think about what you sell. All right, um, yesterday we had a meeting and Matt had a really great idea about incorporating polls into our classes. So what I would love to do, even though I didn't have time to incorporate this because it was just yesterday afternoon, but in the future, I would be asking you to put in your poll things you sell. So we already know that Jacqueline sells t-shirts and uniforms and Fosia sells trucking services. Um, but think a little bit broader. What else do you sell? When we were chatting prior to the class, we know that Jacqueline sells all kinds of promotional materials. Fosia, I thought you also said you sold some additional things. Can you unmute and mention those again? Uh, we do uh, flatbed trucking. Uh, so I guess we would sell our expertise as well and yeah. uh, a track record of being you know, safe. Um, yep. And also, you know, good record keeping, I'm going to say. <laughs> but Excellent. That, I'm sure. Um, no, that's and, uh, good great. customer relations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that's exactly what I was hoping. Going. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. Who's your customer? Now, when you think about who's your customer, it's not just a person who gives you money for doing what you do or selling what you sell. Um, is it agency staff? Is it suppliers? Is it buyers? Use everyone who may use or promote the product that you just identified. So again, it might not be somebody who's, who gives you money. What I mean by that is we sell curriculum development. We sell classes. MnDOT or the university pays us to develop those classes, but really our customer is our student, right? Or out on the job site, our customer might be somebody who we're just dealing with in construction, but they aren't really somebody who's paying the bills. So who are we serving? And the reason that I have you identify this is because your customer is who you need to be marketing to. In addition, you know, we have many customers. So think for just a few seconds on who's your customer. Who are you looking to promote your product to? And then lastly, as we move into talking about ways to market your business through social media, who can help you attract potential customers how can marketing expose you and remembering that friends help friends, list those people that can help you market yourself. How can they be motivated to help you? Think about why they would do that. So for us, one of our services is curriculum development and teaching. Now, for us to be seen as competent instructors, think about who, what you would expect from somebody who's teaching a class. You would expect them to know their stuff, right? So for us, we use social media and we use marketing to showcase our expertise or to demonstrate our expertise. Um, and so we're not necessarily posting things that say, hey, hire us to develop curriculum. We're posting things that show that we know what we're teaching. So sometimes it's a little bit more about your brand 
and who you want to be exposing or promoting your services to. So right now we're just thinking about advocates and people who can help you because they're part of your customer list as well. Okay, Eric has something to say. So I'm gonna mute myself and he's gonna add something. I'm hoping I can be heard now. Um, so one thing when you consider your customers, think about yourself as a customer. As well so when you are looking for a service when you are looking for a product where is it that you go for me i i look at reviews Eric, that's a great point. Actually, um, we are gonna talk about that later when we talk about the different platforms. Um, the benefit of social media is you can get those positive reviews right away. That's also something to be careful of because we know you can get trashed on social media too. So put that in your back pocket and remember it for future, but Eric is exactly right that, um, Advocacy from others is really important in how we choose what kind of work or what kind of product we buy. Remember, uh, we're happy to be interrupted. So if anybody has any insight or anything they wanna add, uh, we don't have to mute you or mute here. We're happy to, <laughs> we're happy to, to just have you offer up that insight. All right, um, so finish up assignment one, not assignment one, you guys know I'm a teacher. What Eric? Oh, Eric got kicked out of the Zoom. All right, so the second thing we're gonna talk about again is how to how marketing might be enhanced by social media. Uh, as we were putting this class together, Eric and I both agree that social media is not the only marketing that you should be doing. And we talked about advertising versus marketing. Do people really even advertise anymore? And I want to offer this up for my own self in a small business um, and for somebody who started the business prior to social media, my marketing was all about personal relationship. So making sure that people knew who I was. What? Oh. I'm still here. Um, Eric got kicked out and can't get back online. So we were concerned our network had gone down. Um, can somebody just put in the chat that you can hear me or somebody talk and say they can hear me? I can hear you. Okay, excellent. So when I was marketing my business um, in the early days, it was really about building personal relationship. And so now as we go into social media, remember that can do it too. Social media can help you build personal relationship and it can also help you establish your brand. But there's nothing that is better than one-on-one -on -one personal interaction, okay? So let's remember that as we move forward. As I said before, social media can be great. Number one, it's free, woohoo! So that's great for small businesses, right? Doesn't cost anything to have an active and really effective LinkedIn page. Um, so it's good. It helps you increase your brand awareness. 
It helps you build an engaged community. As I was researching for this class, I found some social media platforms. I didn't even know what they were. And I'm like, ooh, this is a great ex example of how I could build a network of people who share interest in the things that PE services does. So it can build an engaged community. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I was a state senator and I actually got up to 3000 followers on Twitter <laughs> just by posting videos on infrastructure and people really started to like them. Just last weekend, I was in a restaurant and this woman comes up to me and says, are you Ann Johnson? And I said, yes. And she said, oh, I just love your videos. So there is a there is an opportunity to build a network of interested people on social media, and I'm proof. All right. It does help you sell products and services. So Jacqueline, you've already told us how you use Etsy to sell your, um, your product. And I hope that we can share some ideas here today that help you expand that. It helps you provide social customer service. So if people have complaints or if they have questions, they can contact you through social media. It's super fast. It helps you advertise and sell project or services to target audiences. And in advanced social media, we're not going to get to this today, but you can also track performance and responsiveness uh, to see what's working and what's not working. Before we go to the limitations, does anybody have any questions? All right, let's keep going. We have to be careful though. Social media has some limitations. Uh, first off, social media and the platforms we're gonna tell you about was never built for businesses. So as I wrote this, I was thinking it's like fitting a square peg in a round hole. There's some things that work very nicely and some platforms that are perfect for business if your objective is to build a network or if your objective is to build brand awareness. Some of the platforms uh, just probably won't fit for you and that's what we're gonna fill out when we do activity two. It also provides a platform for very public negative feedback. So as Eric was saying just a minute ago, while it's very easy to post positive feedback and to post things on social media and you can tag specific um, businesses, um, we can go through that when we work with you one-on-one, -on -one, but you can easily be exposed to negative feedback as well as positive. And we know that on social media platforms, negative feedback probably is more common than positive. The other thing is non-authorized users can post and tag you without any credential or permission. Mm -hmm. So again, that becomes very um, challenging and difficult to manage. Social media platforms are time consuming and they require constant monitoring of content and activity. So again, tagging is available on most social media platforms. And what it means is when you see a hashtag, or you see an at symbol on Facebook, it means that that information is gonna show up on your social media platform or in a search. So it's very easy for somebody to tag your business or your person. And again, that requires monitoring, both for positive and negative. And then it's also pretty difficult to measure how effective it is. So the social media platforms that we're gonna talk about in the next few minutes are listed here. Now there's actually lots of other ones. I mean, I couldn't believe it as I went down the rabbit hole of social media. I could not believe how many platforms are out there and some of them are brand new. The ones we're gonna talk about though are these 10, which are the top 10 social media platforms being used by business. Take a look at the far at the right side. You see um, something I took from um, a U.S. government website, so I knew that it was accurate. This is from August of 2022. So the top platforms, consumers, and brands. So this is um, both the sellers and the buyers and anticipate using in the next 12 months. Most marketers are looking to use Facebook. 
uh, 65%. I was pretty shocked at that because I have been hearing Facebook is kind of dead, which is surprising to me because it's my main social media platform for myself. I use it for my business. I use it for my person and I use it for um, my public figure, <laughs> my former Senator brand. YouTube, not very useful for marketers, but I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can use it for your company. Instagram, some of you know what Instagram is. That is more of a photo uh, kind of posting, and now it's getting more into short videos. TikTok, which is crazy if you ask me, and Eric is going to talk about that because I am not exposed to TikTok. And Snapchat, listed also here. I um, Snapchat is interesting. It's If you remember Snapchat, the content is only available for 24 hours. So we'll talk about how that might be useful to you. But certainly you can see here that Facebook and YouTube and Instagram are the most commonly used along with TikTok by marketers. Now you probably know of LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a business website and that's not listed over here because again, it's not used necessarily to sell things. All right, so what we're gonna do next is I am gonna talk about each one of the platforms and I want you to think about how it might be helpful or appropriate in your business. Now, I am going to minimize this and I'm gonna show you, uh, let me make sure I'm sharing this. Here's an example of, for me, again, my company is PE Services. We do construction inspection and materials testing. We also do um, curriculum development and teaching. So this is an example of me filling out activity two as I lectured about it to myself. Just kidding. I didn't really lecture to myself. But so this is what I want you to think about. As I talk about each platform, think about which members of your audience or customer might be there. So for example, again, I haven't started yet. But for example, when I talk about LinkedIn, you too might know that your colleagues are there. Maybe not. Maybe you have a type of business that LinkedIn is not going to be appropriate for. That's okay. Notice down here, I have one. Oh, I guess I didn't finish this. I'm sorry. But I have one Twitter. Not sure how I might use that. So I put a question mark there. Um, uh, but for LinkedIn, not only would my colleagues be there, but clients will be there and potential employees. So if I, like right now, we have a workforce shortage. One thing I'm selling is working at PE services, right? So potential employees might be there. And then here are some ideas as um, I go through each platform, ideas that I wrote down that might be an opportunity on each platform. All right. So have that in mind. Again, if you're driving or you don't have a chance to write this down, this is the objective of activity two. All right, so let's dive in. Any questions while I reorient my screen? Let me ask you, I think we still only have Fosia and Jacqueline on the call. Uh, either one of you go first, unmute and let us know which social media platforms are you guys on right now? Uh, Fosia, why don't you go first? Uh, for business, it's just a website and business cards, word of mouth, but personal, I kind of use a few of the ones that you mentioned. Okay, so for your business, you're not using any platform right now? No, no, no. Um, okay. I'm thinking maybe down the road, uh, Possibly Snapchat, because I use Snapchat a lot. And I know a few people that have really huge platforms that I can oh. use. But excellent. Um, I know tick, a lot of people use TikTok, but I don't, I'm not sure how a transportation guy is going to be using TikTok. <laughs> Trying to <laughs> move a load know. somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Well, one thing to consider is are your clients there? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If you're a broker sitting somewhere, I doubt you're sitting on TikTok trying to move a load. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. How about you, Jacqueline? Which uh, which platforms are you using for business? 
for business, I'm using Facebook and Instagram. Um, I think Instagram is on my Facebook. And eventually, I'll be using like TikTok just to do little short, short videos to just kind of give people an idea. Uh huh. Uh, other than that, that's all I'm using right now. But I, I will have to expand and use a lot more as I go further along. But I'm like just getting started. So. Excellent. Well, remember. Uh, this class today, we're not going to show you how to set up an account. We are not because we don't have time. But what I was hoping to ac accomplish today is just exposing you to each one of the platforms so you start thinking about which ones might be useful. So again, uh, if you're watching this video later, uh, Focia, you can watch it later, or um, I'll email my example to you. I got to write that down along with the evaluation, which I'll send out after class. Um, this is where you might, you know, be prompted to look forward and think, ah, oh, you know what? For example, Jacqueline is using Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, but maybe we're gonna help her get started using YouTube or using Reddit. What, Eric? And LinkedIn. All right, so let's get started. So as each platform is described, I want you to think about your customer. We talked about that in activity one. Not only who's buying your service, but who could help you promote it. What is your message or your brand and how the format of each platform could help you market or not? Maybe you're going to put a big, you know, X through this one or that one because it's just not worked working. Um, and then after all the platforms are described, I want you to rank them in order of importance for establishing a plan. We're going to evaluate 10 platforms. I would not expect you to jump out and start, you know, setting up 10 different accounts. So there's certainly going to be priorities for you. All right, with that, let's get started. So the very first one, uh, the most commonly used or widely used social media platform for business is LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn presence, Eric and I are gonna help you set one up because you need one. As a human, as a person, you need a LinkedIn site. This will also help you market your business in that when you create a LinkedIn site for yourself, this is where you put your personal history. This will come up as a search. So if somebody meets you at a conference and they're like, oh, where did that Jacqueline work? I can't remember. They can type in your name and LinkedIn will often come up as one of the top search results for your name, okay? So LinkedIn can be used as a electronic search tool, as an electronic resume. You have to keep LinkedIn updated. I frankly just updated mine the other day. Uh, and <laughs> It said that I was a senator. Of course, I'm not anymore. So um, LinkedIn is a great tool. Eric has a question, so I'm going to mute myself and let him talk. Well, it's more of a comment than a question. The thing about LinkedIn is it adds an element of professionalism because LinkedIn is built for professional connections. And if you are not on LinkedIn, that you know that's a step you need to take in order to give yourself another credential towards building a professional base. So you can connect in with industry, um, other people in the industry, you can connect with customers, uh, you can look for employees. Um, so, but it's it's sort of, I would call it, you know, Facebook for business because it really is a way to connect with people, but it's, but it's a professional element. There's not a lot of uh, hoopla <laughs> that we'll see when we look at these other sites. These other sites, there's a lot of, of stuff on them, but most of it is 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 not towards business. LinkedIn is definitely a professional element, and uh, will really give you um, kind of a, another uh, another way, not just to connect, but to promote yourself as a professional and as a serious uh, business person. So I got a question. Ah, um, Bosia, were you going to say something? Yes, yes, I have a question. So I use LinkedIn, uh, of course, to. Uh, look for a job on professional connections, but I'm not really a big fan of LinkedIn, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, how do you, do you have another page for your 
business equity separate from your own professional. Yes. Um, so you'll have two LinkedIn's going on. Right. So when you set up, Eric and I can help you do this on a one-on-one -on -one later, but when you set up your LinkedIn, um, uh, your LinkedIn profile, you mm -hmm. will list your previous employers as well as your current employer. And you're able to search for the employer. And if it's not there, you can create the employer. <clears throat> so for your own self, you can create your business, post a logo, post a website, and then ta-da, you have a company LinkedIn page. Uh, you can populate that with as much information as you want or simply with contact information. Then for yourself, yourself, your own profile will link to your business profile. So as Eric said, this is a really a kind, I would consider a, a minimum step in your business is starting with LinkedIn. Uh, my husband is an engineer. He spends all of his social media time on LinkedIn. He doesn't have a Facebook page. He doesn't do anything else. And he is constantly showing me um, updates from other colleagues um, that I have. And so I know this is widely used by professionals. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, um, I mean, Fosi, you guys are in trucking, but who are you selling your services to? Minda, uh, people uh, just like my husband. So yeah. um, I think this is a great place to start. It's free. Now you can pay for upgraded LinkedIn membership. And what that does is allows you to see who searched you. It allows you to send emails to people through LinkedIn. Um, I have had just the basic LinkedIn for as long as LinkedIn's been around and it served me fine. What it does is allows me to find people and then I can go to the company website and figure out how to contact them. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, on a professional note, I do use it to some extent. Um, not really, I'm not on there all the time, but um, but the business I think, side, I just didn't link, link the both of them together. Yeah, and you know, Fosia, you don't, I don't spend any time on LinkedIn other than if I'm looking for people. So, you know, every social media platform will have different uses for different mm -hmm. users, right? Sure. So, this may just be a, for a way for people to find you and to find your business. So all of these classes go well together because as Eric was talking, it occurred to me, LinkedIn could be another way to promote your business capabilities and your business portfolio, right? So as people search it, they may not find your website, but they'll find you on LinkedIn and then they'll link to your website. So it's very effective. We're not going to show you how to use it today, but we certainly can spend some time with you setting up your account. If you notice, there is almost 200 million users in the U.S. Uh, the largest age group is 25 to 34, but I would actually, I would expect, the, so this it really is something that young professionals use, uh, just like somebody said earlier, it's a great way for finding jobs and for getting jobs. Um, but you can also use it just as a way for people to find you. All right. So think about LinkedIn and how it might help you. In my paper, I thought um, for sure I could find potential employees, get people excited about PE services. We post articles on, on LinkedIn from PE services that just engage our customer and our clients we share news stories. So if there's an article in the paper about a project we're working on, all you have to do is, is make a post and link it to that article. We also highlight our employees. So every time we have an anniversary or um, somebody accomplishes something, uh, I see this often, companies will post that congratulations on LinkedIn. And what it does is just affirms that their staff is engaged and um, you know, securing credentials. So it's another way to just promote your employees. Sounds good. I guess I'll take a second look at LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, both of you, Fosia and Jacqueline, I could definitely think of ways that you could promote yourself on LinkedIn, um, especially Jacqueline, because you sell a product 
you could, and there you sell a product and there's many companies that are looking for your product specifically, um, you definitely could use LinkedIn. And remember, you can always link to your website. So you might not sell on LinkedIn, but you direct people to your website where they can buy your product. All right, I'm going to take, I'm going to pause for 30 seconds, write down your thoughts on LinkedIn and how it might help you. I'm going to put my assignment up here again. All right, the next thing we're going to do is talk about YouTube. <laughs> and YouTube, let me get going here. This is not seem to be working. YouTube can actually be a great marketing tool for your business. Let me tell you how. Well, first off, it's extremely popular. Uh, there's millions of people on YouTube every day, all the time. It is 100% free unless you wanna start doing um, ads or selling product. Uh, there, people spend a lot of time on YouTube and the large age group, a largest age group is young people. Now, that's great, but here's how you might be able to use YouTube yourself. Um, if you search Ann Johnson Stewart and you look at my YouTube page, I have, I have my own YouTube channel and you could set up your own channel as well. So FOSIA, you could set up a channel about trucking. You could set up a channel about starting your own business. You know, whatever you're an expert at or whatever you're interested in, you could set up a channel. And then you can start posting videos. Uh, my channel is all about infrastructure and projects that I've worked on. And as I said before, um, it's free, and I use my YouTube channel to post all of my videos, and then my social media, of which I'm only on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, but it provides links to my YouTube page so I can manage the size of those files. I mean, I'd never want all those files on my computer. It would take up all the space. So having a YouTube channel allows you to put your face out there, get exposure, think of it as posting mini commercials for yourself or for your business. And again, believe it or not, in YouTube, you can post a link to your business and bring people right back to where you want them to be on your website. Does anybody else have any stories to share or any insight on YouTube? Eric, do you have anything you want to add? So one thing about YouTube is, <clears throat> for me, it's a go-to for uh, a go-to for how-to. If there's something that I need to fix at home, I go, well, it's probably on YouTube. So I used it to fix my dryer. I've used it to fix my car. <laughs> um, but it's just a really good general information site for things that I don't know about. So in your business, if you're trying to get across exactly what you do and you have a hard time putting together, you know, a written ad, now you can talk about it. Now you can show people. And if, uh, if it's you and a camera, just like Ann said, it's a perfect opportunity for little commercials. And they don't have to be very long. In fact, they shouldn't be very long. I think about 10 minutes is, is around the, the 10 to 12 minutes is about the max that they allow you to, to post for. Um, but anything long, you know, anything longer than that, you might lose, you know, might lose your attention. So utilizing it and getting used to it is, is just something that we would encourage. Uh, and you're probably going to find it's going to take a while for you to uh, uh, get some engagement on there. But once you do, they you, your your videos don't go anywhere, so they're they're on that that site. So once you find a hook for somebody, then they can go back and look at the other videos you've done. So it's kind of a nice archive as well for for you as an advertiser or in advertising because all your material stays there; it doesn't disappear, and they don't have to really search for it. They're already directed directly to it. Eric, sorry. 
That's okay. Eric, those are great points. So two things I was going to add to this. First off, having a YouTube channel or a YouTube, yeah, it's called a channel, is great because, for example, let's say Jacqueline wants to create a YouTube channel. She might only have one video in there. So Jacqueline makes a video of her in her in her workspace saying, Hi, I'm Jacqueline. This is my business. These are this is a brand new product that we're offering for you. And maybe she's wearing a new pullover that is the hottest new style or something like that. And she could say, you know, connect with me through my Facebook or through my website. This is uh this is what I do and we're good at it and we'd love to serve your business, okay? So that's video one, but as she uh, creates another video, Jacqueline, put that in your channel. That way, if somebody is watching your first video or your second video, YouTube will say more from this person and they'll be like, oh, I kind of like her product, click right there. So that's why it's good to archive or collect all of the videos in one place. Again, if you went to my video channel or my YouTube channel, you'll see I have tons of videos and I made a great effort to put them all in one place so people would find them. And guess what? So I would find them too. The second thing I want to mention is you can link to your YouTube videos from any other platform. So Eric said that YouTube videos have to be less than 10 minutes long. However, Twitter videos have to be less than two minutes, 20 seconds. Uh, Instagram and Facebook don't have a limit on the video size, but keep that in mind. If you're going to be posting your video, for example, on Twitter, it should be less than two minutes and 20 seconds. Um, for anybody who's ever watched any of my videos, most of them are two minutes and 18 seconds. I mean, I get right under the gun. The other thing that I'll say about recording videos, they should be recorded horizontally. So don't post a video using your vertical camera, post your video using your horizontal. And with the advent of cell phones, it is so easy to post a video. I was just on a trip and I wanted to post something about a component of the oven I just helped build. And it's too long for me to write about it on Facebook. So I just made a quick video. YouTube can be really powerful and a great tool for you to use for free. Anybody have any insight into or questions about YouTube? And this I, is Tracy. So huh? um, not necessarily specific to YouTube, but you know, I had to jump off for my nine o'clock meeting. Um, yeah. But um, just wanted to say so far, this is really good. You guys got some really important pieces. Um, you know, social media can be so positive, just get getting that information out there. But I always uh, somewhat you mentioned that, you know, it can also be damaging too if there's something on there that you uh, that doesn't make sense or is not appropriate. So to always keep that in mind. Um, but it's social media is the way that's what all the younger people people are telling me and that's how Instagram is I'm hearing is like the really big deal along with TikTok so excited yeah. to have watched the video and hear more from there but everybody have a great day okay and thanks Tracy okay take care all right bye all right so for me using YouTube I have really figured out how to build a following um I do question and answer videos I post content about construction um, you know, Fosia, you could make easily make a video on how to hire a trucking firm or how to um, how to work with me or how I, I mean, I don't even how about actually you could post a video on. You know, some component of your work that people might be curious about, um, uh, you know, how do you respond to spring load restrictions or something like that? So I would look forward to. Um, working with each one of you to set up a YouTube channel and to figure out how to use videos to connect to all the other social media platforms. All right, let's go to Facebook. So Facebook has been around for a long time. It is the most widely used social media platform with almost, oh my gosh, almost half of the world is on Facebook. <laughs> Crazy. Um, in the U.S., there's millions and millions of users. Uh, the largest age group is pretty typical. 
Who should use it? Small businesses can easily use Facebook to promote their work, to promote their events, to promote their employees. Uh, most of us know how to use Facebook, so it's pretty easy to transfer our personal use of Facebook to our business use. Uh, something I want to bring up, and you can see it when I send out my activity two, which is filled in, is you can set up groups. So think about your customers or your advocates and how might you create a group to bring those people together for private sharing or private conversation. Now, Eric and I can talk to you more about groups when we meet, but there's, um, there's an opportunity to invite people into a group. It can be either open or closed, private or public. And what this does then is allows people to find other people interested in the same thing. Um, Eric, I think you said you wanted to talk about Facebook a little bit. Yeah, so I've had some experience, and there we go. I've had experience uh, building a, a, a Facebook page for, for a company, and it the uh, the opportunity there is is pretty vast. Uh, one thing to remember is you know you your whole purpose for social media is engagement. So what does that mean? That means people finding you and you finding people and people interacting with the information that you're that you're putting out there, right? So there's ways to do that. One is to be a really interesting person and have people seek you out because the things that you are doing are interesting. They want to learn about it. Another way is through advertising. Now, uh, Facebook advertising is a little bit tricky because there's lots of different levels to it. And if you've ever been on Facebook, you know that the ads are on the side, they're on the top, they're on the bottom, they come at you through the middle. I mean, they're everywhere. So you can choose any tier on Facebook advertising that you choose. And generally, there's options for how to pay for those. Sometimes it's a penny a click, sometimes it's a you know, it's more than that, but it's click through. That's important. So even if you do advertising on Facebook, it doesn't mean that just because your ad shows up on somebody's page, they're going to look at it or click through to your company. So you might feel like, well, all right, I'm going to put, you know, $500 into Facebook ads and you don't generate much from that. You really have to go to that next step of tracking how those ads function. And that's part of learning the Facebook uh, process. And that probably goes for most any of these social media platforms is you have to be really deep into the process if you get into the advertising aspect. So the other thing I want to say about Facebook and advertising is that um, you can you can start small and get bigger. Uh, you can try just to to, uh, to to promote yourself through through hashtags and interest, but you but the thing to do is just learn learn the terminology of Facebook as well. You know what does it mean to to have a group? What does it mean to um, you know what do I have to do on my page to generate interest? Uh, one thing, the function I'll get it back to Ann here in a second. One function that I've seen for Facebook on companies is using it for for interaction with your customers because the messaging component right there is automatic and you don't have to have a separate spot on your website for, for feedback. You can use that messaging and that's sometimes better because it's almost instantaneous. It's very it's a very quick return. When I go to a website and then it says customer contact, you know, I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll get, I'll hear it a day or two. But if I go to uh, Facebook and I do a message there, the, the response is generally within the day because people need to monitor that. And that's another aspect that Ann, and Ann will talk about is who's going to be monitoring your, your social media and how are they going to uh, be managing that interaction? So just some other little things to, to think about. So back to you, Ann. Eric, that's excellent. And actually, um, I really appreciate you bringing that up. Facebook messaging is so powerful because you may not be able to find somebody on LinkedIn you may not have somebody's email, but you can typically find most uh, U.S. adults on Facebook and you can message them. And that is a really valuable tool. Uh, also with your business, of course, getting Facebook messages is immediate. And it's something that 
uh, you can respond to easily on your phone. And so Facebook does have a lot of power and it can be effectively used in a whole bunch of ways. Uh, so we're going to keep going uh, because we have a few left to go and we're running out of time. Instagram and Facebook are closely related. How so? Well, they're both owned by the same company. So anything that you post on Facebook can be instantly shared to Instagram and vice versa. So when we talk about Facebook and Instagram, we could just kind of combine them together because they're very similar. Uh, Instagram also has messaging, just like Eric was talking about. Um, the, the main uh, objective of Instagram is to share photos which is very useful for businesses. As, you, as you'll see when I send out my completed social media activity too, is um, using Instagram just to build our brand, posting photos of our employees on job sites looking professional, posting photos of our uh, projects as they're completed. Um, for a new business, you know, this is another way for you to start building your photo library. We talked about that in the business portfolio. It's a great place for you to um, share photos. Oh my gosh, here's, a, here's an issue that we had as a company. We don't have professional photographers, and I certainly didn't have the budget to hire professional photographers. Back then, there was no Instagram or Facebook. Right now, what I can do is find a beautiful photo of a project and I can share it on Facebook or Instagram. And I don't have to worry about the, you know, ethical implications of stealing somebody else's photo. I'm not stealing it, I'm sharing it. So even if you don't have a deep photo library of the projects you've worked on, you can share other photos. And I'll tell you what, even if you don't work on those projects, you can share photos. I mean, we're all in this together to promote the heavy highway industry. And so find photos of interesting projects and post them. Uh, you know, um, Fosia, I could see you posting photos of your trucks on different job sites. Uh, Jacqueline, I certainly could see you posting photos of people wearing your product as well, or using your product, depending on what it is. So for me, definitely, we are going to um, share project photos, either from our own sources, or sharing others, we're going to link to articles and share all the information that we post on Facebook. And then the new thing on Instagram is reels, R-E-E-L-S, short videos, it's kind of just started to get popular in the last <clears throat> year. And this is tip, This is what I imagine is Facebook's response to TikTok. So it's short videos. I don't do these, but um, it's an opportunity to have more of a video presence on Instagram uh, without moving to TikTok. Any question on Instagram or Facebook? All right, Eric's going to take over and talk about TikTok. Eric? Okay, um, TikTok, one thing that uh, I found, and I have not um, really been on TikTok much. I've seen a lot of TikTok videos just because they get shared on other uh, media platforms. Um, but the largest age group, age group being 10 to 29, you really have to consider who your audience is. Now, with each of these social media platforms, one way you can engage is through advertising. So if you're going to do advertising, yep, that's you could do it on TikTok, you can do it on Facebook, you can do it on Twitter. That's a whole different that's a whole different element that will allow for you to expand your engagement. Um, the other thing I want to talk a little bit about as I get into both uh, to uh, TikTok and and Twitter um, and some of the other. A platform is how do you build engagement? Like I said, you're very interesting, but you have what is called a profile. And in that profile, you list qualities about yourself, interests that you have. Uh, you mentioned things about your business, but then what you can do is follow other people. And we haven't really mentioned this. So one way to build 
a following is to follow people. So Ann may be able to speak to this, but if you have a an account on uh, uh, on Facebook, they, they're called your friends. So if you want more friends to to engage with you, you need to engage with them. That goes across all these social media platforms. The more people you are willing to engage with, the more people who are willing to engage with you. Now, that's a, it might take a while, but but eventually, you know, somebody's going to be uh, engaging with somebody else that sees something that you shared, and then that that's another set of outreach uh, components, right? So you can use TikTok or um, these videos to to uh, to have somebody react, maybe they like it or they share it and they share it with somebody that doesn't follow you. And then that person turns out to, to be interested in what you have to say or what you have to share through your videos. And then they follow you and engage with your product. So it's almost like building a big web of outreach. So with TikTok, it's all small video, it's, it's short videos. And if you spend any time on TikTok, it's easy to get deep into the weeds. So look at the, that, at the, um, the topics and the uh, that that will uh, really accentuate the business that you're trying to build. So you're not just throwing out a video for everybody to see. Uh, that's not uh, uh, that doesn't have the proper um, hashtag or terminology involved with it. So labeling your your videos so people can find them easier is one way to build uh, engagement on TikTok. Thanks, Eric. Is anybody out there? I think I heard uh, Fosia yeah. say, am I muted? Oh, Jacqueline uses TikTok. Oh, yeah, Jacqueline, how do you use TikTok? I remember you saying you used it. Um, just showing the short video little clips. Mm -hmm. Is it easy to use? Eric and I are not TikTokers. <laughs> uh, it is. You know, you just take a, a photo or little short video of you doing something and mm -hmm. just put maybe like a five second clip of that oh my fear of using tiktok is i'm going to become addicted to it just like my children <laughs> yeah they're fine they're real quick and short but they're fine i know it all right well we right. promise to get up to speed if any of you want to follow up with us and tiktok is one of your objectives for me uh, the only um, thing that I identified is maybe doing short videos that highlight projects upon completion or during construction. And we <clears throat> we certainly could use it to promote PE services to potential employees because, um, you know, it's a young age group that's on there. So there's a use for everything. All right, let's talk about Twitter. Twitter has kind of gone through the ringer in the last year with its new acquisition and lots of people have gotten off twitter but there's still hundreds of millions of people that use it now the thing about twitter is um it is it, there is a, a limit on the number of characters you can post as well as i said before the video time period that is allowed what eric with the current upgrades. So now you can pay for verification, which allows you to have way more than 280 characters. You can oh, okay. do long posts now. I don't know what it does with the videos, but um, there's a lot more, there's there's many more different functionalities that they didn't have before. And a lot of those limits are gone. However, with what you said is, is true, the changes are, some are good, some are bad, um, but there, it's definitely changing as a platform for sharing media. One thing I know about Twitter, and I'm a Twitter user, is it's very like current, right? So people are posting, um, you know, as things happen, people are posting it. As I was doing the research, the recommendations for Twitter is that you post five times a day, which to me is a huge amount of effort. Uh, one thing we'll talk about as we get to the end, which we are approaching, is how much time each one of these social media platforms takes. All right, Eric's got a question from the chat. Well, um, actually, it's more there. Uh, Matt notes that TikTok is highly politicized in a sense. So there's for every program and for every social media element, a lot of the uh, the um, the worth 
is to the people who put it out there. They are collecting information and there might be potentially bad actors. I don't know. I, I, I've only heard a little bit about TikTok as far as who owns it and how that information is collected. I don't know if Matt, you want to chime in and have something to say about that. But uh, remember too, that each of these, these platforms goes back to a, a company and that company uses your information in its own way. So not only are you using it to promote yourself, they're using it to, to promote themselves and other customers. So you're part of the process there. It's not just, you're not on an island by any stretch. When you join social media, you are part of a collective. And a lot of that collective information uh, goes back to a single source and they have way more resources than you do trying to do uh, uh, to, to utilize that information. So just be aware of that, that, um, you know, if it's free, you're the product. So that's something to remember. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't know if you want me to jump on, but yeah, uh, TikTok's owned by China, and so if you're re watching the news, reading the news, you're noticing as as tensions are kind of ramping up politically, there's kind of sides being taken on TikTok, and there's talk about national bans and things, so you, just be careful, you don't want to alienate a specific part of your base by using any of these platforms, and Facebook and, and, and those social media platforms have also been politicized in the past. Politicized meaning there's like a divide where people hate it, people like it, people take sides. So just be careful, I guess, when you choose that you're not alienating specific uh, parts of your intended target audience. Matt, I think that's really good insight. Um, and a very personal thing for each company, depending on who they're trying to promote their business, their product and their brand to was really important. And again, we can talk more about that in one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I know there's talk right now of prohibiting any government agency computer from engaging on TikTok, uh, and that would include phones. And so, you know, if that happens and your customer, your main customer is somebody who works for a government agency, then obviously TikTok is going to be not valuable to you as a marketer at all. So as these things progress, I think that's something to think about. So Matt, I appreciate you brought that up. You know, Twitter's pretty political right now too. So our job today is to expose you to these and to briefly introduce you. Uh, and certainly they all have implications uh, individually. So it looks like we have 10 minutes left to do the last uh, three or four, but I don't think that's a problem because the last four are really not nearly as used by businesses as the previous or the first five we talked about. Tumblr is great for blogging. Now, in the old fashioned days of the internet, blogging was much more popular. Um, blogging is where uh, a user creates kind of an ongoing journal or an ongoing. Um, just ongoing commentary on a specific um, item or product or topic. So Tumblr is used by about 300 min, uh, is used by about 29 million people in the U.S. It is more for reading content. Eric, do you know anything about Tumblr that you wanted to share? Uh, you you explained it uh, well. Yeah, it's more it's it's. It's not as engaging, I don't think, as the other social media platforms. It's um, there. There are Tumblr communities. Same with uh, some of the other ones we're going to talk about. So it's really more of a niche type uh, site where you can find specific interest groups that you can communicate within that interest group. Um, I see it as less of an outreach opportunity for people. People don't go there to find pro. Um, uh, you know, services necessarily. They're there to find common interests and join a community. Okay, thanks. Eric, you wanted to talk about Reddit. So how about you just keep keep the floor? It, Reddit is, it's, it's a really interesting uh, site because it's, um, the, uh, the, the topics are extremely broad and those are called subreddits. So those 
So those subreddits are literally people conversing about a single topic. Now, it's a great place to go and learn from experts in their field who have a who just want to talk about a certain development. You know, you look at the, the, the topics that they discuss, cryptocurrency, gaming, sports, health and fitness, things of that nature. So if you again, this is more of a community that you're already in. So if you go to, say, construction, you will find other people who are engaged in that in that service or uh, or part of that industry. So this is probably more of an industry connection or an interest connection for your business, but it could allow you to garner ideas about how to do some more outreach, uh, upcoming projects that are gonna happen that you should engage with, um, and maybe finding out about new developments within the industry. So it's really more of an informational, but it's also a big discussion platform for, uh, for people within specific ind industries. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> All right, um, Pinterest. Actually, you know, when I was starting to read articles about this and I saw Pinterest, I thought, what am I going to do on Pinterest? That's where I go to collect paint samples, you know, <laughs> and recipes. Uh, Pinterest is a online scrapbooking tool, I guess I would say. Um, if you don't have a Pinterest page, I'll tell you what, I would love to help you set one up because it is a joy to have a Pinterest page. Basically, Pinterest is used to collect articles. It's not only, I don't necessarily think anymore, it's as much a scrapbooking page as a file management page for online content. Um, and so as I was preparing, I thought, how could I, and you can see I left it blank because I was formulating my thought on here, but how can you use Pinterest to post, well, you can sell on Pinterest, you can post to your website, you could post a product along with a link to how to buy it. Uh, so Jacqueline, that's exactly what you need to do, or what you can do on Pinterest, but you can also post articles or post content about the work you do or your your own person. Um, so somebody might search um, entre entrepreneurial ideas or Minnesota women in business for themselves or, you know, whatever. Um, like I said, Pinterest is a really interesting social media platform that's different from any others. And take one minute and look at the age group that's on Pinterest. It is the oldest age group of any of the other social media platforms. And if you think about your customer as somebody who's in upper management making buying decisions, whether they're at agency level or in their private business, they are 50 to 64 years old. So this could be a good tool for you. And I know for my own self and PE services, I'm going to think more about how we might be using Pinterest. And then lastly, Snapchat. Snapchat is great. I think Gwen said, she, or I mean, uh, Jacqueline said she's just starting to, to get into it. Snapchat is tricky. Uh, I have some experience on Snapchat and it's basically posting photos or short videos they only last for 24 hours, so they're really great for short congratulations or short attaboys for if your business gets a project. Uh, again, you can tag your business in it, send your um, send people who see your Snapchats to other platforms, and so it's a way to really um, do kind of outbursts of announcements, photos, news reminders, et cetera. What? So this, this would probably be a good way to, to stay connected to current customers as well, because that Snapchat for as little as it, for as short as it lasts, is still something that everybody, you can send it out as a blast, everybody will see it, and then you'll stay top of mind uh, for your customers. So that's that's the way I look at it, is, is you can send out little mini commercials for yourself, even if they're, um, uh, you know, uh, just like Ann said, just to like, hey, we just got a new job. Hey, we just got a new truck. Hey, we just got a new product in. Uh, that just kind of keeps you top of mind for the customers that are already following you. Oh, that's a great idea, Eric. I love that. All right. So <clears throat> on your own, you're going to work on activity three. So if you've taken notes on activity two, I want you after class, because we're nearly done here, look through and 
rank them. What do you think is the number one opportunity for you? I think I heard Fosia say LinkedIn is something that she's pretty interested in. Um, so maybe that's her priority. Maybe it's starting to post YouTube videos. Maybe it's um, Instagram because Instagram and Facebook are like killing two birds with one stone. You can link them together. Whatever it is, activity three will challenge you to think about who's going to be responsible. Who's going to be able to post? How are you going to use this platform? Is it to sell or is it to expose? Is it to gain credibility? Is it to link to your website? What kind of content are you going to post and who will track it? In this box over here are the considerations. So think about before diving into any new platform, think about what's your commitment? How much time do you have? How much might it cost? All of these platforms are free at the basic level, but anytime you want to expand your services, then you need to start paying some money. So what's the cost? But not only what is the cost that's going to go on your credit card as you pay for the service, but what is the cost in terms of your time and investment and expose, you know, what is all that, you know, what are some of the other costs involved? And then what's the payoff? Is it really going to be worth your time? Uh, Eric wants to add something. Um, it just as a caution, one thing that's a real turnoff for customers is going to a social media page to learn about a company and the last update is a year old. So you really want to stay topical, you want to stay current, and you want to stay active. You, you, the, because if you're not interested enough in your own promotion, customers aren't going to be interested in finding out about you. So just, just be aware, don't spread yourself too thin across too many platforms if you can't keep up with it. Matt, you raised your hand. Do you have some input? Yeah, sorry, I, I keep jumping in, but I don't have as much experience as you do, but I think you touched on it a little bit right there. Is to, I think a good point would be to make sure you're keeping track, like make take good records of the opportunity costs that are going into this because each of these companies is a for-profit company. They're multi-billion dollar industries and they want your advertising dollars. So keep track of how many hours you're spending, how much money you're putting into it, and then what are the outcomes that you can measure? And if you're putting more into it than you're getting out, then switch, make sure you're going to somewhere else that you're going to get better outcomes because they're, in my experience, Facebook, Instagram, all these companies are going to try to rope, rope you in, continue taking your money, even if you're not making money on your side from it. So just make sure you're keeping track, use it like an experiment, you know, hypothesize what, what you think will be the best, keep track. If it's not working, then tweak it or switch to a different platform. And it's always dynamic. It's always changing. So make sure you're keeping track constantly, keeping good notes, keep good records of what, what you're getting out of these opportunities. Yeah, that's excellent feedback. Also, if J Eric and I come meet with you, or if we don't come meet with you, think first about a budget. How much are you willing to spend? And that might not be dollars. That might, might be time, right? So when we talked about here, what's your commitment? How much time do you have? Maybe you say, okay, I'm going to look into what it takes to the LinkedIn company page literally is going to take you minute, you know, three minutes, but that, well, 30 minutes, but let's say you're going to create a Facebook business page. I am willing to spend one hour a week on that or three hours a week or whatever. And then after a few months, you might say, geez, I'm spending like 10 hours a week on Facebook. Uh, by the way, your computer can track that for you. So it's really good. Matt has a great point, really good to, to track all of this. Because cost is not just dollars, it's lost opportunity, it's time spent um, on this when you could be doing other things. So that's really good feedback. Uh, in the resources in your workbook, there are links to all of, of these websites. Uh, looks like I'm missing two of them. I don't know what happened to those, but we'll make sure to update that, how to create a Facebook page, a TikTok account, a Twitter business account, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're not up to doing this alone and you want us to help you out, we'll be happy to do that. <clears throat> All right, so as we close, remember, marketing is the activity or business of promoting and selling your products of, or services. So what are some other ways you might be able to market? 
the last handout you have, and I promise we're done, we're done here in less than, you know, three minutes, but the, the social media activity for is really thinking about other ways you might be able to market yourself. If marketing is exposure and gaining advocates, then what are some other ways you can do that? What are the costs and what is the time commitment? Now, one thing that we have really found as effective marketing for PE services is making sure that everybody on our team is, out de is decked out in PE services um, clothing and wear. <laughs> so um, I have my PE services jacket on today. I can see Eric has a PE services polo shirt. Um, Jacqueline sells t-shirts and promotional material, promotional items. So that could be a very simple way to market your company is having your staff wearing clothing that identifies your brand and your company. Um, what are other ways to market? Uh, for me, it would be speaking at a conference. It would be doing an interview. It would be writing an article. So there are lots of other ways to market that don't involve social media. I want you to think about those too. So social media activity four will help you do some thinking, will help you do some brainstorming and then track that. You know, maybe these things you print out and you write on them by hand, but then you tape them to your wall as an accountability practice. Last thing. Uh, shortly, you'll get an evaluation on this class. Please submit it. You can reach out to Eric or I to schedule a follow-up, and we've already started having those. And lastly, uh, be looking out for um, announcements of all the classes that will follow this. The next two are listed here. On Wednesday, my husband, Jeff Stewart, will be teaching a class on managing your insurance needs. And the week after that, one of our colleagues, Ross Gentig, is going to be talking about how to negotiate a contract. Uh, you know, when Stacy or when Tracy was talking earlier about the business grants and about these classes, I was reflecting on myself in 1995. I didn't have any of these resources. Uh, they're excellent. MinDot is making themselves available to you. And looking back at how I struggled. Um, I certainly would have had an easier time had I all these resources. So I encourage you to participate. I encourage you to call us and set up these meetings. And I would very much uh, look forward to meeting all of you in person. So we're just a few minutes over, but remember, we did get a few minutes of late start. So I'm calling it perfect. Uh, does anybody have any questions before I end the meeting? <clears throat> Remember, these will be posted online with closed captioning. So if you want any of your employees to be watching this, or if you want to watch it later, uh, you will have that at your, um, you will have that available to you. All right. Well, with that, we're going to say goodbye. Have a great day. And remember, next Wednesday, March 22nd, is the class on insurance. I encourage you to go. Uh, you are required to have some insurance even to just work on MnDOT projects, and we're going to talk through that as well as some of the other insurance that's very important. So with that, I will say goodbye, and you guys have a great day. It's been a pleasure um, working with you guys today. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. All right, Fosia. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Jacqueline. Great feedback, Matt. Thank you. Thank you.